for those of you who are taking reading comprehension workshop, I want to give you some, uh, some instructions, clarify any doubts you might have regarding the instructions for this final class project. So I'm going to go over the instructions and try to elaborate a little bit more on uh, the instructions as they're presented here. So the first thing I'd like for you to consider is a problem that you faced either as an English language teacher or as an English language learner. Now, the problem that you're considering could also be a problem that you also considered for any of the other articles that you've done already in class as a, as a, a reading report. So it could be something that you've already considered, something you've already discussed, or it could be a completely different problem. So consider a combination of keywords that are related to the problem. Some keywords or some possible keywords might be related to learning strategies. They might be relate, related to teaching techniques, cognitive strategies, interactional patterns, social learning, specific materials or technologies or assessment, even teacher feedback, recasts. So, so these are general categories, but I would choose probably one or two of these general topics and think about keywords that are related to these. Now, based on the problem that you've chosen, I'd like for you to consider four articles from peer review journal articles for the purposes of this task. Now, these four articles could be the articles that you've already read. They could be the same articles that you've already considered for the reading reports that you did for the class. Maybe they are some articles that you came across last semester, or it could be completely new articles that you have just come across. Okay. Totally up to you, but they should all be related in some way to one central problem that you're considering again for, for this class project. Based on your readings of these four articles, as they relate to one problem that's related to either teaching and learning in the English language learning classroom, I'd like for you to create a 20 to 25 minute PowerPoint presentation. Now in this presentation, I'd like for you to consider the, pro the following. I'd like for you to break it down as follows. You need to have an introduction, a body, and a conclusion. Now in the introduction, I would start with a title slide that has maybe a title of your talk, has your name, the date, maybe some visuals in the title slide. And then starting with the second slide, begin presenting your problem or the purpose of your talk. Now here's where I'd like for you to consider a real life situation where you might need to give this talk. Think of, let's say you are working at a school and you're called upon to address a particular problem in a school and you need to present this a presentation to let's say new teachers maybe they're teachers that just started working at the school maybe consider yourself an administrator and you're trying to present a problem to the faculty all right so it really is up to you the situation that you want to draw on for the purposes of this task or this presentation but i'd like for you to consider a real life situation where you're asked to to create such a presentation and in the second slide, this is where you can articulate this problem and the purpose of your talk. And when you're presenting the purpose of your talk, part, part of this will probably mention the target audience. Maybe the purpose is to help new teachers adapt or become more aware of a problem and some possible solutions that relate to that problem. Okay, so when you are communicating the purpose, you are probably going to mention or at least it should be very obvious who the target audience is. Uh, consider a real life situation, all right, for your talk. And when you state information that comes from an outside source, right, when you are presenting your key points, I would come up with maybe three key points that you wanna talk about in your 20 to 25 minute presentation. But make sure that you mention the authors, mention the author's name, and make sure that you include references at the end of your presentation. So there are two ways really to uh, share information or present information from an outside source. You can mention it, you can verbalize it, or and or you can include the information in text form in the presentation itself. 
Now, you don't always have to do both. Uh, you probably will have times where you can mention it only and maybe have a slide that relates to some key words, not necessarily a particular idea, but you have some kind of uh, text, not a lot of text, but some information that relates to what you're trying to say, the message that you're trying to come across, and then mention according to Ellis, and then you bring out some details. Maybe it's a fact, a statistic, a detail, and you, again, may or may not have that information in your slide. So if you don't have it in your slide, make sure you mention the author. Make, make sure you, you mention the source. And if you do include a phrase or a sentence that is articulating an idea from an outside source, then you also need to include a citation. Even if you don't mention it in your slide, in the text as text, but you mention according to Ellis and you're giving a, an example or a fact or statistic, you do need to include that in the references list. You need to include the reference in, uh, in the final slide of your presentation. All right, so after the second slide, after you present the problem and the purpose, you're going to state your thesis. This is your main idea, your point of view, your claim, your position. And then you will start talking about in the body of your talk, like I mentioned, a combination of original thought and information coming from an outside source. All right, so it should be a combination of what you think and your perspective, but also it should be supported by facts, statistics, examples, information coming from an outside source to give your original thought more weight, more importance, more relevance. Instead of you just saying what you think, you can back it up with evidence. Where is this evidence coming from? From the four articles. Again, these articles can be the same articles that you've already uh, been reading or that you've already read. It could be some articles that you've already read the last semester, or it could be completely new articles if you need one or two more that relate to a single problem that relates to a single thesis. The conclusion, I would have one conclusion slide that basically just summarizes and talks about implications. What does this mean? What is your, uh, what's the big picture? What's the relevance or significance? Right, and then the last slide should be a reference slide. Now I'd like for you to create a video in Microsoft Teams, where you have both the PowerPoint presentation visible, along with you presenting uh, your ideas. I would record yourself in Microsoft Teams within our space in Curso de Nivelación, in uh, our course page, and, and, and then include that, as mentioned here, you'll have a Word document I'm sorry, not a Word document. You can include the link in Microsoft Teams. If you go into Curso de Nivelación, under Files, under Week 4, Class Projects, you can click New, click the down arrow, and click the link to your video. Okay, and then that's all you'll need to do. Just a link to the video where I can access the video here within this folder called Class Projects. All right, so I hope this clarifies. If anyone still has any questions or you would like for uh, us to meet, either online or in my office, let me know. Today's Tuesday. Uh, so I will I do have class tomorrow from 9 to 11, but I'm free before then and I'm free after. So just let me know. Send me a message via Teams if you'd like to schedule time, if you need further clarification. I'm going to go ahead and insert this video here within these instructions. And, uh, but yeah, just let me know if you have any questions.